Hey everybody, CB Sobolski here, and welcome back for another episode of Three Course Comics. Today, editors Mike Martz and Katie Kubert, along with superstar artist Adam Kubert, will be joining us for a dinner themed around everybody's favorite triple clawed mutant. Now, when thinking about Wolverine and what I was gonna serve for dinner, I thought back to his past. What else would Wolverine eat? And then I thought, back in his day, in the Wolverine Origin series, he was quite feral. He was eating whatever he could find. I remember a cover where Wolverine was in the snow chasing rabbits. And I thought, rabbit, hmm. Yes, folks, today for dinner here at Three Course Comics, it's rabbit season. So here in the States, people really aren't used to eating rabbit. However, if you go to France or to Italy, it's quite common. And again, that ties in nicely with Wolverine as he fought in World War II, spent a lot of time in those countries, and has some roots there. Now, with rabbit, there's a lot of different ways to prepare it. It's very easy to use it just like you would chicken or veal or pork. The way I'm gonna do it though is prepare it as a gravy. Usually, to make a gravy, you'll take the drippings after you roast a turkey or some kind of animal. However, with rabbit, it's a very lean meat. There's not a lot of drippings. So you have to come up with a different way to infuse the flavor into the gravy. So what I'm gonna do is make a rabbit stock. The rabbit stock is actually very easy. Over here I have a pot of water that's already boiling, has been salted. I'm gonna add in three cloves of garlic, a couple bay leaves, some garlic powder and some onion powder, some pink peppercorns, and usually some fresh basil. I didn't have fresh basil, so I'm using some powdered basil leaves. And then it's bath time for bunny. Just put the whole rabbit right in. It's gonna take about an hour to cook, so we cover that up, let it go, get to cooking the rest of our meal. All right, guys, course two of three course comics. Uh, went a little Canadian this round. In honor of Wolverine uh, and his Canadian heritage, went with a little poutine, but I did a twist on it. So this poutine is actually fingerling potatoes uh, covered with Gruyere cheese. On top of that is a rabbit stew. And on top of that, just to add a little crunch, a little flavor, some green onion. Uh, did up a little vegetable dish. Uh, this is a Japanese-inspired succotash, so we use Japanese edamame. Uh, and then went bacon, corn, and shallots. It is uh, a tradition here at Three Course Comics that we always make popsicles. Uh, this is kind of my most direct uh, homage to Wolverine's uh, Japanese background. Uh, part of the Japanese custom is when a person dies um, at the graveyard and then later at a little uh, shrine you build in your home called a butsudan, two of the most traditional things to put in uh, front of the, the butsudan or the grave are uh, mikan, which are kind of tangerines, Japanese tangerines, and then an offering of beer or sake, something that the deceased might have liked to drink. So this is kind of my take on those offerings. It's uh, blood orange juice mixed with a little bit of Japanese rice wine, a little sake, and also I infuse it with a little ginger. Let's uh, enjoy and Cheers. continue the Cheers. conversation yeah. about, uh, about Wolverine. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. We talked a little bit about the editorial process of what it is like to edit an event but maybe people are curious about just kind of the editorial process of comics in general. Also, there's different ways to write comics, the Marvel way and then script form. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about that and then, Adam, how you interpret each script? The Marvel way of telling stories was, was really like artist-driven and Stan had a stable of artists, which were fantastic. You know, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, John Romita, um, all guys that he could really trust to just like bring these characters to life. Yeah. Give them the freedom to take his scripts and do what they may. Exactly, exactly. So that, that's really like the Marvel method of, of telling a story, of writing a comic. But these days we more use script style. Yeah, script style is more um, in a plot and dialogue in one thing, so you get more of a whole picture. Most of the people I work with are um, plot dialogue. But really, it's, it's whatever is most comfortable for the writer and, and whatever tells the story uh, the best. 
So if a plot is written Marvel style and the artist needs a little more direction, um, you know, we might break it out into, you know, full script for whatever the scene is that they need. And vice versa, if you've got um, a full plot and the, the artist is like, well, I think we can expand on this or I think it might be stronger if it's told in this way, uh, that's, that's something that's always open to us and something that we, we always welcome because it, you know, makes a stronger creative process and in the end, uh, a stronger product. Some artists like the plot and style, some artists like the script style. Some like the freedom, some like a little more direction. Now, Adam, is, is there one you prefer? You can work in both. I mean, over the course of your career, I'm assuming you've worked in both. If the story is good, the characters are good, uh, you know, whether it's full script or plot, uh, the end product is going to come out well. The, the key word is collaboration. I mean, you're working together. You respect the other, you know, the other uh, creator's work. You, res you know, you respect the letterer, the colorist, the anchor. Once a story is given to me, it's my job to tell the story to the best of my ability. Um, I'm not going to put characters in there that aren't there because that's stepping on somebody else's feet that I'm not going to do. That's not my job. I'm not going to add pages without checking with the editor first or take pages away or, you know, or change the beat or the rhythm of the story because, you know, the writer puts a lot of thought into this and, you know, you got to respect each other's work. But now, are you working mostly still pen and ink traditionally these days or have you switched to digital or a mix of both? It, it's like a mix of both. Um, I, I, I pencil very, very tight. Uh, we level it and then I go back in and tune things up. And you can get effects doing that way that, that you couldn't get, you know, in traditional paper pen and inks. But there's things that, you know, that you can do traditionally that you can't do digitally, too. So one of the things that the fans often forget is that we as editors and creators are also fans. You know, we have the position now where we're fortunate enough to be guiding the futures of the characters that we once, you know, were in awe of as we flipped through the pages as kids. So was there a comic that really put you on the path to your career in comics? Um, I grew up with comics. You know, my dad was in it and comics all over my house. I, I, I was the spoiled, you know, the spoiled guy that, you know, wherever I turned, there were free comics, mm -hmm. okay? So I, I don't really, I didn't, I never went out to the store to buy comics. I never went to the newsstand to buy them. I didn't have that first one that I remember, oh, I love this, you know? So it's, uh, it's a little different for okay. me. My first, I guess, like comic experiences um, was uh, reading Mouse. Uh, I read Mouse in college. It was actually uh, assigned to me in like one of my freshman classes. And uh, Facts from Sarajevo because um, it, it was just so integrally tied to our family. Um, but now that, uh, that I'm at Marvel and, and getting that whole new experience, you know, I get to read um, Days of Future Past for the first time, or I get to read Inferno for the first time and, and, and really have that experience. So that's been a lot of fun to do that. And what about you, first comic? First one I remember reading was number 169, Chris Claremont, Paul Smith, first appearance of the Morlocks, Callisto, Caliban. Uh, well, not first appearance of Caliban, but he was there. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I fell in love. And to me, this was comic books. Secret Wars, man, those covers, though, they still for me. Every time I see one, I just remember where I was, where I bought it, you know, how important it was to me to have that issue when I was a kid. Like, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. Well, guys, I think we got to start wrapping it up. I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks for the books. Sure. Even though you killed Wolverine, Adam's <laughs> beloved favorite character. <laughs> I'm sure he'll forgive you for it. <laughs> But, you know, it was great chatting today. I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a good dinner. Thank you. And, yeah, it was um, great. Hope it we can great. do it again. Thank you Thank so much, right. CB. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Thanks, CB. Thanks, everybody. I forget how big a comic geek I was back in the day, but on my 40th birthday, uh, my parents gave me a gift, and it was a framed uh, copy of my fake ID from <laughs> when I was a kid, and they cut it up, and I thought I'd never see it again. But they gave it to my parents, and my parents held on to it. So for my 40th birthday, they framed it and gave it, put it back together, <laughs> and gave it to me. The name on the fake ID, Logan Summers. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow. that's perfect. Even back then, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's great.